we did this example last week for this loading, right? So P, PY equal to P0 sine IYB. So we did this example, so I'm going to just in the next slide uh, in put the okay so maybe I can put here so we concluded that the slope in the x direction equal to zero slope or rotation equal to zero as well as the curvature okay we did this last week uh, So this conclusion here, slope and curvature about x equal to zero, allow us to simplify substantially the differential equation for plate analysis. Remember, because this term becomes equal to zero, this term also equals to zero. So we end up having only this differential equation. And then we, so if you want to replace this P with your loading, so you can send D to the left hand side, that's what we did. And you get something like this. Okay? So the, the next step, what we did was integrate this equation four times, remember? So we integrated four times, we introduced uh, boundary conditions, and then we end up having this final equation for the deflection. We did this last week, you don't need to copy. I'm just trying to make a smooth connection from last week to this week. I think I remember we had to finish the lecture in a rush because we we forgot the time, remember? So we obtained this equation. So we had there four constants of integration, C1, C2, C3 and C4, which we obtain from the boundary conditions or from the support of the plate, right? So we defined boundary conditions last week, so I'm not going to repeat again here. But our conclusion was C2 equal to zero, C4 equal to zero, C1 equal to zero, and C3 equal to zero. Well, it's not always like that, okay? And then after replacing these boundary conditions in this equation, if you want, we obtain this final equation for the deflection. Okay. And then I think we ended last week at this point. And then what we have to do now is is just to get the deflection. We just need to replace this y coordinate. Of course, this p0 is given is is the distributed load you have in your plate. D is the flexural stiffness of the plate. We defined this uh, last week as well. And then you have everything to calculate the deflection. Of course, the deflection in this case is going to be 
only a function of y. Okay, we can even, oops. We can even write this in a better form. Say that the deflection is going to be a function of the y coordinate only. That means for every x coordinate, uh, the deflection in the y direction is going to be the same for every cross section in the x direction, basically, right? Okay. Uh, now I'm I'm going to introduce another method. So this worked very well for this infinite strip plate under these conditions where A is much bigger than B. So that in that case, for this particular support of the plate, these boundary conditions apply. And then we can simplify a lot this differential equation. But it is not always the case. So what I'm going to, to show you now is the Navier solution. for getting the deflection of the plate, okay? So this Navier solution is something like this. So the deflection, so it's going to be a function of x and y, is going to be given by a summation of terms. It can be an infinite summation. So basically what we are going to do, this Navier solution is going to be an approximation. This approximation is going to be as better as the number of these terms in this summation, right? Okay. Ideally, if you use infinite term, you get the exact solution, but we don't want to do that. That's why we do uh, I can show you uh, you can, we can put this in an Excel spreadsheet and then change the number of terms in this summation and see how the solution converges to the final. <coughs> so we then we'll find out that after some number of terms, uh, the difference in the result is uh, meaningless, right? So, so this is for the deflection, an approximation of this type um, for the, uh, the distributed load, Navier also said that, okay, the distributed load we also need to approximate in the same way. Okay? Something like this. Sorry, here is not Pn, here is An. Here is Pn. and also sine n by y over b. Okay? Um, there is one important thing, property, that we are going to use a lot for this Navier solution, which is the integral. So I'm going to, to leave it here. The integral, for example, from zero to b, of sine n pi y over b times the sine of n prime pi y over b dy. So this is going to have two solutions. One is equal to zero when n is different from n prime. The other is equal to b over 2 when n is equal to n prime. Okay? At home, you can try to do these primitives and you will get this conclusion. For example, you can do something like this at home. 0 over b equal to the sine so it's 0 over v times the sine of, for example, 2 pi y over b. 
times the sine of 3 pi y over b. According to this rule, this should be equal to 0, because 2 is different from 3, yeah? So you can do this at home if you want. For the lecture today, we are going to assume this is correct, OK? Um, so one consequence of this, let me put in a different slide. Let me copy this. There is one interesting first consequence of this property here, which is if I apply, OK, let me move this. If I integrate, uh, if I integrate the um, this equation here, sorry, this equation here, the left hand side. If I do this, integral from zero to b of uh, p x y. Okay, dy. So if I integrate the left hand side, I also need to integrate the right hand side. Uh, but let me just add this thing here. Integrate pxy and, and multiply by sine of n prime pi. pi y over b. This is correct. So if I do this for the left-hand side, I need to do the same for the right-hand side. Okay, I'm going to put the integral inside, inside of the um, um, The summation. Now we have sine n uh, pi y over b times sine n prime over b. Okay? Now, if you look at this property here, and if you look at this integral here on the right-hand side, you can conclude that the only non-zero integral is when n prime is equal to n, isn't it? So, all the other integrals inside this summation are going to be equal to zero, because then n prime is going to be uh, different from n. So what I'm saying, for example, let's consider two, two terms in this summation. I will have p1 integral 0b sine of 1 pi y over b times, let's say n prime is equal to 1. So I will have times sine of 1 pi y over b plus the term p2 in my summation, right? Sine 2 pi y over b times sine of 1 pi y over b, right? So according to this rule here, when n is different from n prime, so my n here is 2, n prime is 1, so they are different. So according to this rule, this integral is equal to 0. So I have only this term here, which is going to be equal to p1, uh, b over 2. Right? Yes. Uh, what does n prime represent? Sorry? What does n prime represent? 
n prime is another um, index. Uh, can be any number from one to infinity. Okay. Um, so in this case of this example I'm doing here, this summation of with two terms only, I'm considering n prime equal to one. It's just a, a demonstrative example. Okay. So as you can see, the result we have is p. So if I add another term here and another summation, I will have p three zero b sine. 3 pi y over b sine 1 pi y over b. So this also equal to 0 and so on. All of them will be equal to 0, right? OK? All right. So is that condition always true? Like n is not true? It's true. Yeah. Always. Yeah, that's what I did here only for three terms in this summation. But what you can do at home if you want in Excel or in MATLAB. Just put this there and put uh, as many terms you you just fill down in Excel, right? And you see all of them are going to be equal to zero. Is that always the case? Or can it change? no it can change. You can have n equal to n prime or n different from n prime. Right? Okay, just hold on a bit. Just clean this a bit. Okay. So, continue here, maybe it will become easier. So we will have, so the left-hand side I'm going to, to leave as it is. Okay. The right hand side is going to have a huge transformation because this integral here is going to be equal to um, Pn. Sorry, not int. It's going to be equal to B over 2. So on the right hand side, we are going to have Pn times B over 2. Isn't it? Because all, whenever this index n changes, and this guy here becomes pn prime, sorry, this becomes pn prime. OK? So whenever this n index changes, if it is different from n prime, that integral will be 0. OK? When n is equal to n prime, that what I have in this summation becomes pn prime times b over 2. b over 2 is the result of the, this integral when uh, n is equal to n prime. OK? So the conclusion now, I can say, all right, this is. I can say this this way. I can replace n prime with n. It doesn't matter because I have n prime on the left hand side and I have n prime on the right hand side. Okay? And I can solve this equation for Pn is going to be equal to 2 over b integral from 0 to b p x y sine of n pi y over b dy, OK? Where this, this pxi is the given external load. I can make a note here. So it's a, an important conclusion. So this 
PN is going to then go inside there. Not now, but it's going later. We are going to, to solve the same strip plate example with the Navier solution and compare the result with the one from last week. That's exactly what I propose to do now. Okay? So you will have our differential equation is going to be this one. Uh, is the same as last week, okay? So this thing here is going to be my uh, Yeah, this is going to be my PXY over D, okay? Uh, so I'm going to copy these two equations, that page, copy, maybe shrink them a little bit. Let's keep them here, and let's also have this equation here. Everything in the same slide, so it's easier for you to follow, hopefully. You can think that way, so what I did here is was just a mathematical manipulation to get this PN Okay, but I, I don't think it's, it's difficult to follow. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this, these guys into this differential equation, right? So let's do that. So I will have, maybe you can write here, the fourth derivative. So let's do like this. Now, W is going to be summation n, oh, n equal to 1 infinity of a n sine uh, n pi y over b. Okay, so this is W x, y, uh, and then, in fact, I don't need this guy here, okay, this is going to be equal to p, x, y, which is going to be equal to summation, and equal to 1, infinity, so I'm putting this guy here, okay, but now inside I have p, n, but Pn is going to be equal to uh, okay, we can keep Pn for now and we replace later. So this is my oh sorry, that's one thing missing. This is going to be equal, so I can put, so P over D, so this D I'm putting inside of the summation, it doesn't matter, D is a constant, right? It's the flexural stiffness, is a constant in this summation, so it can be inside or outside of this summation, so I just did put it inside, but I could have put it outside. Okay, now, yeah, this is, my p uh, x y over d, right? Okay. Uh, so nothing special so far. I'm just replacing. Now I'm just going to put this in a better form. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to send the right-hand side to the left-hand side. 
So basically, here becomes a minus n equal to zero. Okay, very very simple thing. Nothing really. Uh, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this. So summation, and I'm going to open a bracket. So I need to do the fourth derivative first of this guy. So I will, if I derive a sign, I have, so I will have an, first of all. If I derive a sign, I have a cosine. If I derive then the cosine again, I have minus sine. Then if I derive sine, I have cosine. And I need to do that four times, right? So every time I do that, I am going to be including here uh, n pi over b. So because I'm going to do that four times, so this needs to be power 4. And then sine to cosine, one derivative, cosine to sine, two derivatives, sine to cosine, three, cosine to sine, four. So I end up having a sine. Uh, and then I will have here on Pn over d, and then I can multiply all of this by sine of n by y over b, and this is equal to zero. Right? So nothing really special. So far, I'm just deriving a sine and a cosine. That's this step was just was just deriving a sine and a cosine. Now the big thing now is what we have here is now okay inside of this summation so this term here I have this first bit I have two options so I have equal to zero an equation equal to zero so I have two options and I have a product on left hand side and on right hand side I have zero right so one option is uh, sine why is it red? Yeah? Um, quick question. Can you factor out the sine and phi y? Oh, yeah, you're right. I know what you're saying. Yeah, thank you. That was your question, right? This was your question, right? Okay. Very good. So, um, yeah, so either sine of n pi y over b equal to zero, which cannot happen. Well, cannot happen the best way is. Um, we need to have a, a plate reflection for, so for example, if y equal to zero, uh, this is equal to, so, okay, so what, what happens here? So we need to say either this is equal to zero or a n, n pi over b power four minus p n over d, equal to zero. So we have these two options. This option here uh, is uh, we cannot allow that to happen because uh, if we impose this, we are saying, okay, no matter the values of a n and p n, uh, this, if I impose that sine of n p y b equal to zero for any y coordinate in my plate, so it doesn't matter which value I calculate for a n p n, that is going always to be equal to zero and we will have a deflection equal to zero, right, in our plate. And that's not what happens in reality. So this option here is not acceptable because this option here, if I impose this, uh, this option will deliver always deflection equal to zero for all y coordinates of the plate, okay? So the only option we have to basically 
fulfill completely the differential equation for plate analysis is if um, this term is equal to zero. And then if I solve this for a n, it's quite easy. So I get now this is going to be equal to p n over d times um, b over n pi to power 4, right? Or if you want, like I have here. Well, I have here in my notes something like this. I think it's exactly the same. Okay. So this is going to be our AN. And now, if when we have our AN, what we can do is, so if this is our AN, let me put here, um, let me copy this our deflection equation from the Navier solution. And let's just replace a n in this equation. Okay. So if I do that, I get something like summation. So a n is going to be equal to Pn over pi power 4 d n over p power 4 times sine of n pi y over b. Okay? The only thing we need to do now is get our Pn, which we calculated before, or we can leave it like this, knowing that Pn is going to be equal to this thing, this term we calculated before, right? So this is given, I can say like, say like this, this is the distributed load you have in your plate. So for the case of our infinite, um, for the case of our infinite plate, yeah, uh, I think the load that was, yeah, the load given was this, I can write here. So, so in the PXY for the, our infinite strip plate, the load was equal to P0 times sine pi y over b. Remember, so this was given in, in the question for the infinite strip plate. So in this case, I'm going to put a note here. If you note from here, I can say n prime equal to 1, isn't it? Remember? Okay, let me go back. When I introduce you this rule, I think I went we talk here about the n prime in this equation, right? So here, for the external load in this integral, so what is going to happen is I'm going to replace this here, and our n prime is going to be equal to 1, basically, right? Let's do that, then. Okay, so let's do this. So Pn is going to be equal to 2 over B. 
integral from 0 to b. Now, px is going to be equal to p0 sine of pi y over b. And then it multiply now by sine by this term here, sine n pi y over b dy. So the reason why I said n prime equal to 1 is because I have now here the integral of the product of two signs, where one is n, the other is n prime equal to 1. So the only non-zero for this integral, if you go here, the only non-zero is when n equal to n prime, or in that case, when n equal to 1. All other integrals are equal to 0. So this is going to be equal to 2 over b. I can send p0 outside of the integral because p0 is a constant times p0 times, now I have integral of sine n prime equal to 1 multiplying sine of n, so the only uh, non-zero value of this integral is going to be equal to b over 2. Don't forget the result of, you see, I'm going back again, the result of the integral here is the upper limit divided by 2, okay? And look at that, we transformed a very, so this cancels out with this, the conclusion is Pn is going to be equal to P0. We transform this summation, infinite summation of terms, in a very simple, okay? And there's another conclusion, Pn equal to 0, and n needs to be equal to n prime because of this integral, and n prime is equal to 1, so n equal to 1. So I'm going to put like this. So you have this conclusion and this conclusion. Why is this one here on the left, this first one, is, uh, this one here on the left is important? Because if my n is going to be only equal to 1, this summation is only non-zero for the first term, n equal to 1. So what I can do is, I can copy this to a new slide and say, instead of having a summation now, I'm going not to have a summation, and my n is going to be replaced by 1. So here, instead of n, I will have 1. Here, as well, instead of n, I will have 1. And pn is going to be equal to p0 is here. Oops. OK? pn equal to p0. So I can replace here pn by p0. Much better. So a little bit of cleaning here gives us what? P0 times B power 4 over pi power 4 times D times sine pi Y over B. Let's compare with solution we got last week. So let me go back. I think I wrote it here somewhere. Yes, this one. OK, let me copy this. And so this was obtained by integrating four times, calculating the constants of integration. Remember last week? Today, we adopted the Navier approach. OK, these two should be the same. Well, the first thing is that in this equation here on the left-hand side, there is no function of x. So I can say this x goes away from here. 
So let's check all the terms. We have P0, P0, D in the denominator, D in the denominator, B power 4, B power 4, pi power 4, pi power 4, sine pi YB, sine pi YB, right? Exactly the same solution, right? Okay, any questions? So most probably, oh, I have homework for you. Um, so the homework for you is, if you want to practice, I think this is a good homework. We have a plate now where it is simply supported in the same edges as the infinite strip, but also now in these edges. Along the, so this is my x direction, this is my y direction, okay? So you still have a and b, In this case, A dimension is similar with B. So we can, I can, in fact, give you some, okay, let's say, A equal to, uh, one meter, B equal to 0 0.5 meters. So you cannot say now that A is much bigger than B. No, that does not apply. So using the Navier, Okay, using Navier, no, what I want is get W, X, and Y for P, X, Y constant and equal to P0, for example. You can try to do at home if you want to practice. Your assignment will have a question, most probably something like this, right? Okay? So let's do a break. If you, do you have any questions so far? Are you following this or not?